This is the second section of chapter four, Volumes of Revolution. And this is Volumes of Revolution around the Y axis. So just like Volumes of Revolution around the X axis, um, this is something we've already encountered in core one. Um, and you'll remember what we'll have is some sort of function and uh, it's going to get rotated around the um, y-axis now between some limits and we'll end up with some sort of volume here as it gets uh, rotated round. so our volume is pi times now our limits are going to be x limits so our values of a and b if i were to draw them here so b and a so they're not x limits now they are y limits and um, x squared dy which means that this needs to be x given in terms of a function of y now sometimes it might actually be helpful if you've got x squared in terms of a function of y and that that may be easier depending on the question so methods that we have from pure two to do our integration so we've got by parts we've got substitution we've got reverse chain rule maybe we've got some trig identities i don't think i mentioned these in the other video as well um, partial fractions yeah so we're using these methods to work out our, our integral okay the diagram shows a curve uh, with equation y equals 4 log x minus 1 the finite region r is shown in the diagram and is bounded by the curve the x-axis the y-axis and the line y equals 4 so I've got my limits um, of 4 and 0 so b is going to equal 4 my lower limit a is going to be equal 0 um, region r is rotated around the y-axis so okay it gets rotated around the y-axis by 2 pi radians uh, use integration to show that the exact value of the volume uh, of the solid generated is that 2 pi root e times by e squared at minus 1. Right, so the first thing I know, I've got y equals 4 log x minus 1. I need to get x as a function of y, so basically I need to make x the subject. So let's um, add 1 to both sides. Let's uh, divide both sides by 4. So I'll write it as a quarter. y plus 1 equals uh, log x. And then I'm going to raise both sides to the power e, like this. And uh, when I do that, I will have e to the power of quarter y plus a quarter equals x right so our integral pi times by my limits were 4 and 0 and then I've got e to the power of quarter y plus a quarter that all needs to be squared dy okay now squaring this uh, function in the brackets basically means you times the powers by 2 so now it becomes e to the power a half y so I'm just times this by 2 uh, plus a half dy now that's the same as e to the half y times by e to the half dy now e to the half that's just a constant it's just a number yeah it's not going to change it's not a variable y is not in it so that let's take that to the other side 
So I end up with pi e to the half, because that's a constant, 0 and 4 is my limits. So all I'm left to integrate is e to the half y dy. So we're going to use the reverse chain rule to integrate this. So um, let's put our constant here, half e to the half. And uh, using the reverse chain rule means you uh, integrate the outside. So it's going to be e to the half y. So remember the inside of the bracket doesn't change. And basically the inside is that basically, think of that as being the inside so we've integrated the outside so the e stays as e inside of the bracket doesn't change and then we divide by the inside differentiated which means we divide by half and dividing by half is the same as multiplying by 2 so there we go and my limits of 0 and 4 so now we're ready to substituting right so half e to the half then we're going to have 2e to the half y so my upper limit is 4 minus 2e to the half times by 0 Okay, from there, we'll get half, or e, uh, pi e to the half. The first bracket um, becomes 2e to squared. Then the second bracket, well, anything to the power 0 becomes 1. So e to the power 0 becomes 1, so we've just got minus 2. And all we need to do is to get it in the form that's required, which means taking the, the two out, because that's a factor of both the terms here. So you can take the two out as a factor. E to the half, well, anything to the power half is the same as the square root. Then what we're left with in the brackets, once we factorize the two, is e squared minus one. So we've proved that as required. So you should now be able to do exercise 4b on pages 81 to 83. So we just need to remember that to find our volume, it's going to be pi x squared dy, which means we need to get our function written as x equals a function of y, or if possible, x squared equals a function of y. That will save you having to square it. So don't square root it to make x equal the subject. Just leave it as x squared um, as a subject. Then our limits are going to be a and b. And we are just rotating around the y-axis. To get our volume. Okay. Is always like curves aren't they yeah so there we go there's my shape rotated around the y-axis like that and we get our our volume with our limits down here somewhere I suppose that'd be the limit a and limit B 